we run out in the last two laps, I'm definitely losing my job. Welcome to the Watkins Glen finale episode. Ooh, so exciting. First thing in the morning, we went down, put the tent up, set it up to make sure we have all the data that the team needs to make the right decisions first thing in the morning. So as always, my lovely wife, Umtel, made an awesome breakfast for everybody. Homemade beef turnovers. Oh my God, were they good. Bursting with flavor, full of good protein for energy to be able to crush the competition. Thank you, Umtel. Love you. Since 786, had the engine failure on Saturday, and we didn't finish the race. We started at the back of the field with 787, also in class three, by the way. Sorry. Hey, Mike, how are you? He is gonna hunt everybody down in three. As I always do, I have a pep talk with whoever's starting, kind of some thoughts and ideas. Hey, Brian. Because we're starting at the back of class three, where 786 was on the front of class three. So on Saturday morning, the pep talk was, don't be hunting class four cars. Cause you know, again, there's that gray space between the top of three and the bottom of four. But now it was the opposite. It was, you're at the back of three. So we're going hunting this morning to see how far forward we can get before you come in. You're gonna have even more fun this morning. You know why? Like, you get to hunt everybody. I know, I know. I get, to, I get to start the back so of the field. I can I almost say weapons free. <laughs> just fire at will. Well, why would you say it? No, absolutely. Free. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Umthel said that I should play that song over the radio. Let everybody in class three know. Team off camera's coming through. Get out of our way. Can I see a bitch? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Move, bitch. Get out of the way. They don't even have to do that. I'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. Right, go I, around. I got it's it. Not, no, but there's, there's yeah. no holding back. Go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. Let me know if you feel a difference in the tires ever. The, the grip. As we said before, these RE71 RSs are new to the team. We just started running them. And like everything else, there's always a sweet spot for pressures and temperatures on all tires. So, whereas the RE71s, we know very well, because we've been racing on them for years, these RSs are slightly modified compound. So right now, I'm still collecting data to figure out, you know, where's that sweet spot where the tire has enough heat and temperature to give it the best level of grip. We're still trying to figure out the right starting temp temperatures for pressures, because it's, I mean, they're gonna be squishy. Oh, they are. What I'm thinking, gut, is they're gonna heat up pretty quickly the temperature. Is low, it is. So we're still, again, collecting data. It's going very lonely out here. Fast man. Hey, how are you doing? Good luck today. Have a good race. Thanks. So as I commonly say, the racing gods will test your resolve. They want to know how bad do you want it. So this was test number, I don't know, 10 million and five for our team. Did we make these even yesterday? Did we make those even? That's a and this one's not right. TJ question. Brian's having problems with the harnesses in the car. Hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm going to fix that one. Holy fuck. Yeah, I know, that's what I said. Uh, I don't think this is gonna work for you. All right. So I crawled into the car, like I always do, and I helped them get properly situated in the car to prove to the racing gods, Team Off Camber wants it bad. And you got room for me. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> A typically brisk morning there at the Glen, and I reminded Brian, hey, in the morning, your tires are gonna be cold, your brakes are gonna be cold. So make sure you get a little temperature in them before you start really pounding on the tires and the brakes. You want to bed, that, bed the pads in nicely. Yeah. Gonna be up 
new fronts and new rears. Yeah, but I'm gonna go, I'm just going straight line. Yes, Get no, 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 no. Speed, brake I, hard. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But I'm saying, do once you bed in the brakes, yeah. to heat up the tires and to kind of scruff the tires, go yeah. side to side a little bit. Not the shit that people do across the track. Yeah. It just has to be a little bit. Because yeah. all you're doing is trying to scrub all the edges of the tires and yeah. get the mold release compound off the tires. Okay? Other than that, it's fine. And it's important to remember things like this because that's the difference sometimes between a successful race and a oopsie, I met a boo-boo. And we don't want boo-boos, do we? Gentlemen, I will call the start. I will call the start. Safety lights are still on. Safety lights are still on. If you know me, you know this is what I always say. The best, most wonderful moment of any race, sprint race, endurance race, doesn't matter, is the start. Free flag. You have X number of cars who all want to get through turn one at the same exact time and space. Remember, you've got a dead in brakes, you've got a dead in brakes, and scrub the tires. Just because when you're in the moment, the heat of the moment, you forget stuff. It's more exciting to be in the car, obviously. But it's just as exciting to see our team car coming around and going through the pack at the start of a race safely. You're sometimes, you know, inches away from the guy next to you or behind you or in front of you or whatever, and nobody wants to give it up. So it is probably the most dangerous point of any race and probably therefore the most exciting point. Kind of funny how the racer's mind works, huh? She's so cute. Wish you were here. It's always fun to see friends and family, um, you know, on FaceTime during a race because they want to know what's happening. One of our techs, TJ, while the race is starting to go on, his family FaceTimes us. It was really cool to say hi to them and, you know, have them root the team on because I know they watch very enthusiastically, so thank you. Safety lights are still on. Safety lights are still on. So we're going around again, we're going around again. Yeah, of course, now he's showing double yellow. <laughs> double yellow, we got caution, full course caution on the main street. Full course caution. Got it. As I said, to be in the race is always the most dangerous part. And unfortunately, at the Glen, because the Glen suffers no fools, if you're a little too frisky at the start, you tend to hit stuff, you tend to go off. Sure enough, what happens? Yellow turns into a double yellow, which is, for those of you guys who don't know, a single yellow flag waving means a local incident. So be careful, slow down, be aware. You get a double yellow flag, two yellow flags, that means the whole track is on full caution, which means you can't pass anybody, you gotta slow down, and you gotta be aware because either they're pulling a the car off, out of the barrier, something else is happening, so you gotta be aware. They're not bringing everybody in, you still circulate out there, but you gotta slow down. You know, the race started, the car is safe, we're good. Brian's doing his hunting thing, so I run to the trailer, have some breakfast, get my suit on, get prepared. Everyone's at the pit, everyone's ready to go, so Things are going our way today. So let's see what happens. Oh, we're in P1s. Really? Big shout out to Uncle Frank. That's Tony's uncle. He's a big NASCAR race fan, and he happens to be a big off-camber race fan. His excitement is so contagious. It's wonderful, like truly a wonderful thing. And to see how excited you can see Tony in the race car, I love it. So shout out to you, Uncle Frank. Love you. The strategy is, you're gonna run to the light. If it's least, if we get a double yellow, we're gonna bring you in. Copy? The pit stop, the three minute pit stop that we get every hour and a half-ish, is a synchronized ballet of different activities with different people moving around in the car. 
Oh, by the way, from now on, when you're finished with the task, hand up. Done. Like a normal torch, find me. Eyes, it's a done. Got it. Okay, same thing. It's important because we want sharp pit stops that everything be coordinated. I was watching and he almost took off and you were about to That's yeah, why I said yeah, stop, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. So one of the pit guys was like almost still checking air pressure while the guy was about to leave the pits. Not a good situation. So like always, you know, it's, it's one of my jobs is to make sure that everyone, you know, knows what they're doing and communicates amongst the team. So I said, hey dude, when you're done, you know, raise your hand that way we all know everything is done and we're ready to go out on track. Where are you on track? Where are you on track? Race God test number 1,150,064. Uh, you know, it's getting to the end of Brian's stint. So I just want to keep track of, you know, where we are with fuel, time, that sort of thing. I'm trying to get behind the radio. He's not answering. Mo to Brian, where are you on track? Where are you on track? <laughs> Is it the in-car radio, which would really suck? Is it my headset? Is it my radio then? The Glen, because it's such a big track, it's 3.4 miles with lots of elevation changes, wreaks havoc on radios. Entering pit, entering uh, pit. Fuck, move. We're going, we're going. The radio's not working properly. So Brian was not able to let us know beforehand he was coming in and he came in. So the whole team is now scrambling to get ready. So we have a three minute pit stop. Let's go, let's go. Move! Where's the fire extinguisher? Right there. Move! Go get your helmet on. Thank God when I figured out, it was, I think it was my radio or my headset, not the car. So, crisis averted. Yes, my flag. So we're using, I don't know, something red, I remember, just, just having to flash that. I have an off-camera flag that we've been using for years, and they've deteriorated because of the rain and the weather and the sun and everything else. So. I forgot they had a new flag for this race. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. Go, go. You're all right. Take your time, Tony. You got time. Flex it in. Tony, over your Remember, shoulder. Remember, he's got a pad. You don't want the pad. Take it out. Give me that pad. You got lots of time. Take your time. Plenty of time. Brian's coming out. Tony's going in the car. Max and TJ are filling the car with fuel like they always do. One minute, one minute, plenty of time. Check the wheels, they don't check the tires. You know, I walk around the car. I make sure that the, nothing is obvious to me that is something that would be a safety hazard or something that doesn't look right. You know, we, we try to be as thorough as we can during the pit stops because to me, the number one thing is safety. I don't care necessarily about winning about anything else. I care about the team. I want to make sure everybody is safe, first of all, has an awesome time, second of all, and third of all, yeah, stay on the podium is a nice thing. We, we enjoy that. Give it to me. Got it. Got it. Go, go, go. All right, that's full. Tony goes out, he's starting a stint, and I always do a radio check. Again, make sure you have an open line of communication. A detriment to that is when somebody on the team is hitting transmit on their radio, it locks up a channel. I can't say anything. Brian, hang on. Open mic, turn the mics off, turn your radios off. I instantly hear that. I can hear something in the pit from my headset. And I know someone's got an open mic. So then there's so much happening at the track and I don't yell at people, but I have to kind of raise my voice and say, hey, someone's got an open mic, shut your radios off. I mean, thankfully that's- Mike, your mic is on, turn it off. Tony, radio check, radio check, can you hear me? Well, yes, yeah, start it. 
Yes, please, start it. And you can go when ready. Just go, start it and go. Start. Power, hit the power button. I don't know what happened there. Tony's about to leave the pits. You know, our pit stop is, our pit window is closed. So time to go. And he can't start the car. Don't know why. Um, eventually got her started and took off. Go, Tony, go. I don't know. It's just weird. Green, green, green. Go, 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 Tony. Green, green, green. Go, go, go. Like you could fuck me. I don't know how we're the last years. Well, I just made how to how to feel. feel. Yeah. Very squishy in the beginning. What did they come up to? So, um, not right in front. Right in front was 33. Brung gets out of the car, the front tire's at 33, which is like, uh, that doesn't make any sense. Um, it should be a lot hotter than that. So I think we started the tire pressure a little too much the opposite way, because after Brian gets out of the car normally, the tires are way hot. So we tried an experiment of starting them way low. Well, guess what? Starting them way low on this particular day with this particular tire on this particular track didn't work very well. And that's why he was saying that the tires felt squishy because there wasn't enough air in them to keep the sidewalls as stiff as they needed to be to corner at a reasonable speed on this track. Yeah, try something, you win sometimes, sometimes you don't. Our car is running really well. We're doing well in class. Uh, the Warp Ted team comes in. They ask me to take a stint in their car. So what do I do? I grab my pads, jump in their car, and then go out and do some laps in the Warp Ted 826 car. Life doesn't get any better than this thing. Finished my pit number 826. Finished your pit? I'm sorry, that was wrong. I finished my stint in car number 826. Typically fun? I mean, yeah, someone else hands you a race car keys, go drive the car. Lovely. How does the car feel? Does it feel like it lost any power? Keep driving it. Yeah. Miss Maya, who is our lovely <laughs> videographer, editor, producer, sometimes screenwriter. You're very talented, honey. You're amazing. She sets up the camera and then gives me a ride in her X3, which I know she loves. Just do me a favor, be sensitive to the car. If you feel the engine, you know, burble or something else, then we should talk again. Otherwise, just drive. Tell his team, like, what you say to him? And when he got in the car, I said, I got you back a bunch of laps. I passed a bunch of people. Don't drive like a you know what. Oh my God. <laughs> and I tapped him in the chest. Excellent, thank you, Aya. No problem. And Give me five stars on Uber. <laughs> yeah, so I'm back at the OCA pit, and now we're trying to figure out pitch strategy. When we bring the driver in, the driver change, blah, 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 you know, pit windows, yellow flags, you know, whoa, how do we stretch it out? How do we make sense of it? And it's one of my favorite things. 
it's the strategy of the team because as we see from Formula One, talking to you Ferrari, <laughs> making poor strategic decisions cannot make up for driver talent on the track. So strategy is critical to a race. So we're just having this discussion about you know our pit stops, and all of a sudden there's this cloud of smoke that comes to the grid. Yellow, double yellow, coming down at 75. Copy that. I guess it's not a bad system. It certainly slows everybody down in a hurry. Yeah, that is true. See what the incident was. I don't see anything yet. Copy. Uh, I got the ring around. They're pulling the Mazda out of turn nine. That's unfortunate. He was slow all the way from six. It must have just died. Someone throwing smoke up. <sighs> Big terror thing, by the way, when racing. Tony comes in, my friend Greg goes out, it's his stint now. Go have fun, Greg. Yeah, that's tough. I don't know if we should do one or two, because if we run out in the last two laps, I'm definitely losing my job. Love him, but I don't know what happened if maybe the car didn't get full full, uh, but 787 is running dangerously low on fuel to the point where we may not finish this stint properly. <sighs> Again, racing gods are testing. But as the weather frequently does at Watkins Glen, it's great one minute and next minute it's pouring and windy and the rest of it. We're all desperately holding down the easy up so it doesn't blow away. Back! Just hold it. I don't know if it's on the wall. Just hold it. Just Another test from the racing gods. How bad do you want it? Because I'm out in the warped car, our team has to do a pit stop without me. Which is fine. They all know what to do. They all know what the process is. Finished at like two minutes and 40 seconds. 240. So 20 seconds before, you know, our three minutes was up. So they're just hanging out and waiting. It's a wonderful thing. So, the race ends, guess what? P1, baby! Did it again. Team off camper. God, I love these people. 787 takes P1 in the same class that 786 took P1 on the grid for qualifying. Kind of cool, huh? That's why I always say, it's not about the horsepower, it's about strategy, it's about teamwork, it's about consistent driving, and the racing gods tested us, found us to be worthy, and allowed us to get a P1. So. Thank you, universe.
team off camper on the podium again. I'm passing people, and then I look down, I'm like, boys, why is there half a tank of gas in the car? They're like, uh, we filled it, and it started to bubble back, so we stopped. I said, nobody bothered to check the fuel gauge before I left? Yeah. So then when it started raining, I backed off, think, okay, let me try to finish the race, yeah. not without coming in. I got like 10 of, and the light came on. So I came in. I couldn't finish the stint. We gotta work on strategy, boys. Not good. But I was hypermiling. Dots in people only gave me half a tank of gas. Rookie mistake. They didn't want you to outrun Dotson. No, but that's why I was going quickly. I know. That's what we need. Team, baby. Uh, bravo, bravo, bravo. Even you, Greg. Good bravo. drive, guys. <laughs> he won. Oh, give me that. <laughs> we already hugged out. So Peak one, baby. One. Yeah. All right, let's get change. Come on. Success. As we love doing it, it's podium time. Everyone is taking their sweaty, disgusting race suits off, uh, kind of getting comfortable. <laughs> That's all right. I love it. Oh. Good awesome. driving, dude. That was that awesome. That was awesome. I mean, what? what? Oh, it's on the line. <sighs> That How was, was that for you, that, Sarah? That was my best drive ever, <laughs> okay, ever. Awesome. Oh my God, that was so much fun. I didn't think we were, pa I didn't think I had passed for the lead. I thought I still had to catch him. So I was still going, like, oh. oh. oh that was the booyah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it was like, holy mac, like, I got it, I got it, yes, yes. <laughs> and it's true. Going, never give up, keep going, keep going. You get number one. As the rest of us are a little bit passionate about racing. Number one. Woo! We always do, we walk over as a team to the podium ceremony. And like they always do, they do third place first second place, and then first place. really cool for them to call the team to call us up and you know give us our trophy our little sticker which is critical for the car it makes me very proud of the team that we have everybody everyone on the team is a critical part of the success we could not do it without each and every person on the team so thank you thank you AER for a wonderful season um, for wonderful racing and, you know I even talked this before we love AER here at Off Camber Autosport the way John Kalesa has structured the racing, the people who go to AER events, um, you know, again, the rules that John tries to implement, and it's, it's wonderful. So if you guys out there haven't done endurance racing and you're looking for somewhere to do endurance racing, I highly, highly recommend American Endurance Racing. John Kalesa is wonderful, his team is awesome. Um, if you have any questions, you can call me up. I'm happy to answer any question about AER, but come and join us because it is a great group of people. The racing is close. I mean, there have been so many times where we've gone either first, second place by a hundredth of a second. A hundredth of a second after nine to 14 hours of racing. Like, dude, how close is that? I can't tell you guys how many times, you know, before we started doing the, the reality show, we never gave up. The team knows. My thing is, until the checkered flag drops, you don't stop. You don't stop. It doesn't matter what the racing gods throw at you to test you, to test your metal. You don't stop. You never stop, okay? And this is another example of it, right? I mean, we had a, a terrible failure on Saturday with 786, which was just emotionally crushing, but I boxed it and said, nope. We're focused on the race weekend. You know, we prepped 787, had a couple little things with 787. And what did we do? You know, in a class where we should have been outclassed by the rest of the hardware there, we take P1. That's why I love to race. It never ceases to amaze me how you have gumption, you have tenacity. And, you know, the racing gods, they will reward that 100%. 
hopefully you're enjoying the journey um, and some of our adventures that we have here at OCA Racing and at Off Camber Auto Sport. Um, and I gotta say, for those of you who watch Formula One, this past weekend in Sao Paulo in Brazil, the race, Fernando Alonso, dude, I love you. You rock. The last 10, 11 laps of that race was a master class on how to defend. The way he defended a substantially faster car that was behind him, with Sergio Perez driving the Red Bull car, and how he kept him behind until like the last lap of the race, and then gets passed by Perez, and then Perez makes a boo-boo going into turn one, and then Fernando says, go time. Again, in alignment with what I said. Never give up, never surrender. You know, Fernando, even though he knew the Red Bull was clearly faster than him, kept pushing, kept pushing, kept going. Did not give up. And what happened? He gets passed on the last lap and then passes Perez on the, on the rest of the lap and takes third place. He takes the podium position from a car that should have kicked his ass. Thank you, Fernando. That was awesome. That was an awesome class. And how to be a superbly finesse driver. I loved why I was the edge of my seat the, that entire race. It was awesome. So anyway. So now here comes the part that nobody likes. After the podium ceremony on Sunday, it's time to pack up the utensils of war, as we put it. And I gotta tell you, it's not a couple few things. There's a lot of stuff to go back in the trailer in an organized fashion. We don't just dump stuff in the trailer because then it makes a lot of work for me when we get back to the shop here. So I make sure everyone puts everything back in an organized way. The drivers help us. Thank you, drivers. And then myself and the crew get the off-camber transformer, as we call him, fired up, and it's time to make that journey back to New Jersey. what you've learned here is never give up, never surrender in anything in life and you'll be successful. Thank you again for watching the Off Camber Life. From my heart and from our team, thank you.